Hi everyone, welcome to Heart of Avocado. My name is Tapasya and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing my fountain pen and fountain pen ink collection with you all. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around and we're going to dive right into it. I have been an avid fountain pen user for over six plus years now. Um, I first got into fountain pens around 2017, 2016, 2017, but I didn't really start using them on a daily basis until around 2018. But since 2018, I have been using fountain pens pretty much on a daily basis, and they are a huge part of my life now, and I don't see myself ever not using fountain pens. With over six years of experience, of course, I've experimented with a lot of different fountain pens. I've donated some, I've sold some, um, and it's a constantly evolving collection but I am somewhat of a minimalist so I try to keep my collections very tiny and I try to make sure that I'm only buying things that I'm actually going to use on a daily basis and things that I'm going to be able to use up within a reasonable time frame so with that said let's dive into my fountain pens <laughs> The very first pen that I added to my fountain pen collection was the Pilot Metropolitan. Now if you know anything about fountain pens, you know that this is the beginner fountain pen. If you're getting started with fountain pens, there are around three pens that are usually recommended for beginners and I would say this is the most popular one. So of course, this is the pen that I got and I started off with. I got this pen in 2016. Unfortunately, this pen was not the best option for me and it kind of turned me off of fountain pens for a while. But funnily enough, this is now the pen that I pretty much use on a daily basis. This is my favorite pen, this is my go-to. So even though it didn't work out for me as a beginner, I absolutely recommend this pen to everyone. I have this pen in a fine nib and usually I am attracted more to extra fines and fine nibs, but every time I've tried an extra fine nib, I haven't had the best experience with it. I had the Pilot Kakuno in an extra fine. I hated that pen. I ended up getting rid of it so fast, and medium is usually a little bit too thick for me. So the next pen I discovered was the Platinum Preppy. My favorite fountain pen company is Pilot, and it is closely followed by Platinum in second position. I love this pen. This is the pen that really made me fall in love with fountain pens deeply and made me a lifelong fountain pen user, honestly. This is a fairly cheap pen. I think it ranges from four to six dollars. I got it off of eBay. I think it cost me less than ten dollars total with shipping. I think the clear pens are called the crystal versions. I'm not sure, but it's basically just the clear demonstrator platinum preppy and I believe I have this in a fine nib as well and I have always used this pen with a cartridge and the one thing that I really love about platinum fountain pens is that the ink never dries out like I mean ever the second most amazing thing about this pen is that it literally writes so smoothly like i can't even explain to you how beautiful the writing experience is with this pen after i got this pen i would say for the next two to three years this was my primary pen i used it every single day and i was just absolutely obsessed with this pen in 2018 i went on a dream trip so one of the countries that i went to on my trip was austria and while i was in austria i saw the lamy store i'm not much of a souvenir person i like to buy more meaningful things on my travels that i'll use for a long time and if i can't find something like that i usually don't buy anything at all but this was one of the purchases I made in Austria and I was so excited about it when I came across the store. This is the Lamy Safari with a white body and this is in a fine nib as well. And this is probably the second most popular pen that is recommended to beginners and one of the reasons is that it has these divots here that are really helpful for beginners it kind of helps you to figure out how to really hold a fountain pen the downside is that it doesn't end up working for every fountain pen user because everyone holds their pen a different way i personally don't mind the grip too much and this is just a lovely pen it's super smooth it writes really beautifully 
Um, I have used it both with cartridges and converters. My preference is definitely um, a converter over a cartridge for the Lamy's because I'm just not a fan of the colors of the Lamy um, cartridges. One of the downsides I would say is that the converter I have is kind of leaky sometimes, so that's a little bit annoying, but I do like the fact that it has this little window so you can see the level of ink in your converter or cartridge. When I first got this, I was using this pretty regularly. Nowadays, it's kind of been sitting unused. I will pull it out every few months, ink it up, and use it a little bit here and there, but I would say that right now this is not something that I'm using too often. After this pen, in the next year or so, I was gifted this lovely pen by a friend. This is the Pilot Custom 74. I cannot even explain how beautiful this pen is. Like, this pen is just perfection. With the black body and the gold details, it is just the most perfect beautiful pen ever. This has a twist top and the nib size on this is a soft fine and this pen has a gold nib. The soft fine nib is just magical and it's super smooth and I would say when I first got it, I kind of hoarded it a little bit. I didn't use it too much, but nowadays I kind of use this on a regular weekly basis. The next two fountain pens I have are these Hello Kitty Platinum fountain pens. I'm not sure what exactly these are called, but I bought these off of AliExpress and they came in like the cutest tubes and these are just amazing. I mean, you can't go wrong with platinum. Platinum pens are just amazing. They always write super smooth, the ink never dries out, and they're just a dream. So these ones are so adorable. They are glittery. This one is like a glittery pink cherry blossom type of color, and then this one is a purple one and i actually use these with converters so it's kind of silly because i think the converter might actually be more than the pen itself this one has kind of been leaking the last time i filled it so i'm not sure if i did something wrong or what's going on with this pen so this one has been put aside temporarily to diagnose and see what's going on and then this one is currently not filled and not being used but these are just great pens. I use them a lot. They're super cute, super pretty, and I probably won't be parting with them anytime soon. The next three pens I have are these Unknown Pilot Fountain Pens. These are vintage. I found these at an antique shop. Basically, I was just on the hunt for like vintage fountain pens, so I was going to antique shops and just looking for fountain pens, and that's when I came across these pens. So this was the first one I bought. The lady I bought them from said that she'd found an entire box of these pens at an estate sale, and she didn't really know much about it. I think she said something about how the owner potentially worked for Pilot, so that's why he had um, boxes of all sorts of fountain pens. I haven't really been able to find much information on this pen online. I've tried looking for something similar, but there's just nothing to be found. They have plastic bodies and they're super light and they came in this green color and then they came in this peach color. And then if you open it up, it has a hooded nib and I just find this hooded nib to be so adorable. And the filling mechanism is kind of interesting. It has these balloon converters. I don't know why I decided to squeeze the converter. I thought that pen was empty, but it had ink in it, so big mistake. Um, my hands are all inked up, but are you even a fountain pen user if your hands aren't inked up at all times? Anyway, let's get back to business. So, like I was saying, it has a pretty interesting filling mechanism. It has a converter that is attached. It cannot be removed. And let me show you the mechanism in the empty pen. It looks like this. You can see this one is empty right now. It is a little bit see-through. And you just squeeze it on one end. One side is completely attached. And the other side, you can pull back. And you just stick it in your ink, press, fill it, and that's it. It does hold a very small amount of ink, even though the converter is very large, you're, you can only fill it up to like here, but it works and I would say the ink dries up pretty quickly, so you do have to use up the ink 
um, within, I would say, a month or so, otherwise it dries out. Pilot pens, in my experience, definitely don't keep the ink alive even half as long as the platinum pens do, but this is a beautiful pen. Butter Smooth Nibs. I have this pen here in a fine nib, and this was just such an amazing pen. I think I paid like $27 with tax um, total, and I liked it so much, I decided to go back and get a few more. So I got another one in a fine nib, and then I got one more in a medium nib. It doesn't say what the nib size is anywhere, so you kind of just have to draw out the lines to see which is which, but I have three total of these and I absolutely adore these pens. And that brings us to the last pen in my current fountain pen collection. This is the Pilot Vanishing Point in matte black and this one is actually on the chopping block currently. I have been trying to sell it for a few months. I am not using it currently. I'm hoping it'll sell soon. It's not because anything is wrong with the pen. This is actually a wonderful, wonderful pen. Uh, my friend bought a Faber-Castell, I think it's called the Emotion or something, but basically it's a matte black fountain pen with a black nib as well, and it just looks so cool. It looks like a stealth pen. So that was my motivation behind buying this pen. I like that pen so much, I wanted something like it. And when I saw this matte black vanishing point, I was like, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. I have to have it. This is the most expensive fountain pen I've ever bought. And I've read online that lots of people have experienced issues with the nib being scratchy, but maybe I was lucky, but this has the smoothest nib ever. And I have this in a fine nib. It does come with a converter, but currently I have a cartridge in here which is almost done. I didn't really use it, it just kind of dried out from um, not using it often. There are a couple of reasons I'm parting with this pen. Um, the biggest thing is that I've discovered that I like really thin barrels. So if you look at the Metropolitan, it has a very thin barrel but this one has the clip on the bottom side so that makes the barrel pretty thick and i have very small hands so i just don't find this pen to be very comfortable so that's the main reason that i'm selling it uh, second of all i got this in a fine nib and i regret not getting it in an extra fine nib of course with an extra fine nib there's always the risk that it's going to end up being a scratchy nib. However, this one is more like a medium in my opinion. So those are the two reasons I'm selling it. I still think this is like such a cool pen and I really wish it had worked out for me, but it's kind of just sat most of the time. Every time I pull it out and try to use it, it just doesn't work out for me. So it's time to part with it, even though I don't really want to. If I'm not mistaken, I think the decimals have a thinner barrel i'm not fully certain about that but i might look into that otherwise i also saw that some brand made a dupe of this pen and they put this clip on the other side so i might give that a try because i think one of the reasons the barrel is so uncomfortable for me is that the clip is on this side so maybe having the clip on the opposite side would make a difference but overall lovely pen beautiful just not the right fit for me and i'm going to pop this pen into this little pen sleeve i have this is a pew leather sleeve that i got from aliexpress a long time ago and it's great to keep pens safe i just found this the other day i don't know how i misplaced it but i came across it the other day so i'm going to start keeping this pen safe in here some final thoughts on these pens i've watched a lot of fountain pen collection videos and i always see like huge collections of really really expensive fountain pens and that is great but i just want to say it is not necessary to have really expensive pens like i have experimented with a lot of fountain pens there are pens not pictured here that are not in my collection currently that i've bought and sold because they didn't work out for me and 
The one thing I have to say is that the price of the pen does not matter. What actually matters is whether or not the pen works for you. Is it a good size for your hand? Does the nib write smoothly? Is the nib size a good fit for you? Do you like the feel of the pen, the weight of the pen? Like these are all the important factors. Like this is the most expensive pen and it's so beautiful and I love it, but it's just not a good fit for me. And here I am like six years later, even after having experimented with all these fountain pens this is the pen I keep coming back to even though this is a cheap pen it is a beginner pen this is my daily user and there are so many cheap pen brands out there like Jin House you can get started with fountain pens for as little as like three to five dollars this was the pen that I was obsessed with for the longest amount of time out of any pen I've ever had and this is just a six dollar pen that i got off of ebay and it writes so amazingly so don't think that you need an expensive fountain pen collection or even an expensive fountain pen to get started or anything of the sort i had the jinhao dragon i think it's called the jinhao dragon 5000 and that was a more beautiful and fancy pen than anything i've ever had and i think it cost me like ten dollars total so there are some beautiful pens out there even if you're looking for really aesthetic pens you can definitely find something in your budget so if you're just getting into fountain pens just experiment and have fun I think social media often creates unrealistic expectations for the objects you should buy and consume and it's really important to kind of move beyond that messaging and realize that ultimately it's all about the experience, not the stuff. I use fountain pens because I love doing things in old-fashioned ways and it just makes the process of writing so much more incredible for me. So I just wanted to put that out there. And with that said, let's move on to my fountain pen ink collection. Something else that I have that I forgot to mention is my dip pen. This dip pen is from Amazon and it's made out of glass and it is so beautiful. I mentioned this in my writing desk tour video, so if you haven't seen that already, I'm going to link that up here. I'm going to be using this to swatch all the inks in my collection. First off, I have these Pilot cartridges and these are a staple for me. They come with like 12 cartridges each and each box lasts me like a good year or two if not more so i have this one only has one more cartridge left in it and then i have this backup one I primarily use these in my pilot metropolitan one of the pens i got more towards the beginning of my fountain pen journey was the conklin durograph and that was a limited edition pen from goulet pens and it came with a free bottle of monteverde ink so this is my first fountain pen ink ever i have this in the color caribbean blue this is what the bottle looks like and fountain pen inks are so hard to use up this is about where the level of the ink is so even though i've been working on this for like six years now there is so much ink left it might as well be a full bottle i see so many fountain pen ink collections online and people have hundreds of bottles of ink and let me tell you you could write hundreds of pages every single day and you will not be able to use up that collection in your lifetime fountain pen ink is extremely hard to use up and that's why i try to keep my personal fountain pen ink collection very small something that is usable and when i can i like to borrow inks as well from my friends I think this is such a beautiful, vibrant blue color. I think the name Caribbean Blue is right on point because the color really reminds me of the ocean. And this is one of my all-time favorite inks for sure. The second ink I ever purchased was this Noodler's ink. And this is in the shade... 
Apache Sunset. I think there was some huge controversy with Noodler's ink and they changed the name of all their inks. So I'm not sure what this is called now. And it is just the most beautiful yellow orange shade. And like all fountain pen ink, it shows up very differently depending on the paper, the pen, and all sorts of other factors. So let's see how it shows up in here. This one is literally filled to the brim. Next up, I have two inks. This one is mine and this one is my friend's. And the reason I bought this one is because I loved this one so much. So let's get into that. So this here is the Pilot Irishizuku ink in the color Yamabudo. These are some of the most beautiful fountain pen ink bottles that I have ever seen. I also think the Ferris wheel bottles are really beautiful, but these are my absolute favorite. Something about the shape and just everything is just really elegant. Look at this. This one got stained by the ink and look at how pretty it looks. So this one is about halfway empty. Uh, my friend has had this since around 2017 or so and I'm currently borrowing it because he's not using his fountain pen ink so he graciously let me borrow this because this is one of my favorite shades. I absolutely love Iroshizuku inks. They're really wet inks so I think the colors show up just really beautifully and I do want more Iroshizuku inks but I would prefer to have them in the smaller bottle but I love these bigger bottles so much that I wanted to have at least one ink in a bigger bottle and then any future inks I buy will definitely Definitely be in the smaller size so that they're easy to use up so that prompted me to get this other shade which is the shade Shin Ryoku and this is just a beautiful forest green color so I'm gonna start with this one I think I inked it up a little bit too much here, but you can see more even lines over here. It's just a beautiful forest green color. Out of all the fountain pen inks I've tried, this is my absolute favorite shade. With that, let's jump into my ink samples. So these here are all of the ink samples that I have from Goulet Pens. And all of these are shimmery inks, so I don't really put these in my pens because I don't want the ink to get stuck in my pens and also because even if I did ink up a pen, I don't think I would use it fast enough. So I just reserve these for my dip pen because it's easier to use it that way. So let's start with the famous J. Arvin Emerald of Chivor ink. This is such a beautiful ink. I'm not sure if it's going to show the sheen as well on this paper, but let's find out. I'm going to try to get really close to this one so I can show you the shimmer. It's a little bit hard to see and depending on the paper you're using, this has quite a um, wide shade variety. You can get like greens and even reds in it. Next up, I have a diamine ink in the color Blue Lightning. This one also has a very beautiful shimmer. Next, I have another J. Arba ink. This one is in the shade Amethyst, the Laurel. So this one is like 
a very dark royal purple kind of like an eggplant type of color and this one also has a shimmer to it you can really see the beauty of the color as well as the shimmer in this swatch here and excuse my messy handwriting i don't know why but my handwriting is always like 10 times worse with this dip pen i think one of the reasons is that i have to hold it pretty high up because of this little bulbous barrel thing going on so i have to hold it a lot higher than i'm used to so it kind of makes my handwriting a lot worse also this pen is kind of scratchy so that's another reason now we're down to the last ink i currently own and that is the robert oster rose guild tint So this is a pretty light rosy color. I would say it even has like hints of brown in it. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but in person it has a bit of a brownish tinge to it as well. And it has a very beautiful shimmer, but it's a very, very light color and hard to see. I don't really find myself reaching for this very often. However, I've experimented with other Robert Oster inks and I would say Robert Oster is one of my favorite ink brands after um, Pilot. I had some Robert Oster ink in the color Torque and then I had some jade green color and I've tried a bunch of their colors and their inks are just chef's kiss. This is everything I have in my current fountain pen ink collection and something that I've learned the hard way is to always buy ink samples first. Um, it's very easy to just try an ink one time and then buy it and then you end up not liking the color later on because the way an ink shows up depends so much on the type of paper you're using, how absorbent it is, whether or not it's a suitable paper type for fountain pens, the fountain pen you're using, the nib size, whether it's a wet writer or more of a dry writer. So there's just a lot of variables and it's kind of like when you go to a store to try on clothes and even though something looks really pretty in the dressing room, you come home, you wear it at home and you realize it just doesn't look very good on you. So it's kind of like that. You never want to buy an ink after just using it one time because it's hard to say whether you'll end up liking it in the long run. So when I can, I always prefer to buy ink samples first before I commit to a bottle of ink. I have a bunch of different ink samples on my wish list right now that I'll probably buy sometime in the future. But with all these ink options, I definitely don't have any shortage of ink right now. In terms of inks, there are a couple of shades that I want to add to my collection, but it is a very slow process. Once I've experimented with the ink samples and I find something I like, I will eventually commit to another bottle of ink. And in terms of pens, I'm very, very happy with my collection currently. I don't really have any plans to um, expand it at the moment. I've just been obsessed with these two pens. These are my current daily writers. I use my Metropolitan for all my current planning in my planner and then for journaling i've been using my custom 74. last thing i want to mention is the accessories i have i have some diplomat cartridges that i bought along with a diplomat pen hated the diplomat pen i think i had like a faulty one it just it was a horrible experience i ended up donating that and then i also had a sailor shiki ori pen and the nib didn't really work out for me so i sold that recently but i did buy a bunch of converters i had two i gave one converter to the person i sold the pen to and then i kept one converter for the future because i know i will purchase a sailor pen at some point in the future so i want to have a converter on hand then i have some lamy cartridges in black these are some miscellaneous cartridges i think these two are platinum and then i have an assortment of converters here so that is it for accessories and that is it for my entire fountain pen and ink collection I hope you enjoyed it and if you did be sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you didn't like it be sure to give it a thumbs down and as always do leave your thoughts down below I would love to hear about your favorite fountain pens your favorite fountain pen inks and what your thoughts are on any of the items in my collection so leave a comment down below and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.